This is November the 16th, 2012, and this is Frank DeMora, author and teacher of the book of the Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. And this is where I'll connect the dots between Bible prophecy and current events using proof, evidence, and obviously the documents to show you that everything that the Lord has warned us in the Bible is coming to pass or is in the process of being fulfilled right now. And this is one of the reasons why I listed this post from the YouTube video that I'm making, The Blueprint from God. Because obviously if you know the word of the Lord, you know what kind of blueprint that he has given to us to follow instructions to keep on the watch for certain events that are going to take place in the future. And we know from our generation those events that he prophesied about and told us to look for, we're seeing them right now. And we're the only generation who are seeing all of these things taking place at, the, for, at one time, in one generation. That is very specific information, and that gives us detailed information that we are the chosen generation that will see Jesus Christ return. Now, let's go in and talk about the blessing. All right? In order to do this, I need to talk to you and show you something here that the Lord had warned us, things that you should not do because obviously I'm going to be talking about the United States here and uh, I'm going to show you why the United States is struggling so much. Now in prophecy we see first of all in Genesis 12 3 and it says this, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee and ye shall of all families of the earth be blessed. So right away we know that anybody who comes against Israel the Jews, God's chosen people, whether you like that sound or not, God has chosen the nation of Israel, the Jews, to sanctify his holy name. And you'll see how he's going to do this later on. But so do we know that it's you cannot, if you really call yourself a true Christian, you cannot go against God's will and you cannot go against the nation of Israel. You may not like what they're doing and you may not like the fact that they even don't recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah but there's a plan that God has put in place for the Jews he's going to be carrying out that plan we're watching that plan go into fruition but anyone who comes against God's people we know that there's a curse now that being said let's go to Joel chapter 3 verse 2 because Joel warns us this and I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. This is where the judgment takes place. And will plead with them for my people, for my heritage Israel. So we know who he's talking about. There's no question at all about who he's talking about. Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So anybody who does this, you, you're going to be led down into destruction. That's what the Lord is telling us right here. So let's go down to Zechariah 12.3, which I've mentioned many, many times in my different posts. And in that day will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, which it is almost to that point now, but it, this won't reach its complete max or fulfillment until the seven-year tribulation, but we're well on the road to having this fulfilled. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. So you don't want to mess around with Jerusalem or even burden yourself over Jerusalem. Because if you do that, you will be cut down. This is what the Lord tells us. Cut into pieces. Though all the people of the earth be gathered against it. So we know in the last days, everyone, including the United States and the rest of the allies that Israel had. And that in the last couple of years have already lost everyone will be coming against Israel in the last days. We see this also in Joel when he talks about uh, all of the people are going to become as you see here. So it says I will also gather all the nations and just the same thing as we see Zechariah. So let me go back now to my post now that you know what the curse is all about and look what's going on in the United States. The United States is a massive debt. Now, what I thought was very interesting is this. This verse that I'm going to be showing you in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12, 
would suggest that the United States is no longer blessed. And we know that for a fact because Barack Obama has been working to divide up the land and he has also been working with a, this peace initiative that has been dead for the last two years, but they, he is still pressing for East Jerusalem to fall in the hands of the, <coughs> excuse me, the Palestinians for a new capital city of a new brand new state. And of course, when you do that, you violate uh, the, the curses that God told us about. And so the United States has definitely fallen under their curse. So look what the Lord says in Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee good treasure, and the heathen to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and shall not borrow. Now, what's going on in the United States? Well, it's the reverse of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12, because now what's happened here is the United States is no longer a lender. They are a massive borrower, and I'm going to prove this to you. And so we know that the curse is definitely falling on us. We know when the, when the Lord speaks about the rain and he's going to bless the things of our hands, guess what? We're in a drought situation in the United States, and if you've been following my website or if you've been watching the news, you'll see that most of America looks like it's going into a dust bowl. And when the rain does come, we're seeing that it's not a gentle rain that is going to prosper the land, but we're seeing floods that are taking place. We just saw Hurricane Sandy that just wiped out a large portion of New York, and they're still suffering from it. So we know that the consequences of going against Israel, the Lord has placed those consequences on the United States. Now, keep this in mind also because I'm going to be covering this. You'll see how everything uh, comes into play. But in Revelation chapter 18, verse 12, Jesus gives us information about the things that he's going to be carrying or taking away from the people who live in the last days. And now one of those items you'll see here, I'm gonna read the scripture for you, but it's gold, okay? So it says this, the merchants of gold and silver and the precious stones and the pearls and the fine linen and the purple and the sink, their silk, excuse me, and the scarlet and all citron wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of the precious stones, wood and the bronze and the iron and marble. Now. I didn't put all the scriptures in there, but I just wanted to focus on the gold. But these are some of the items that when Jesus takes away these items, the people will be wailing, they will be weeping. You'll see that in, in the uh, scriptures. And so what does that tell us? Well, obviously, if the people are weeping over these items that are lost, that means that these items are precious items. Okay? It even says the precious stones. Now these precious items, so what I've been showing the people is better be watching the price of gold and the silver because obviously it's going to shoot through the rock. It's going to shoot through the ceiling just like a rocket. And of course, there's many variables that are causing the gold prices to go up. We may see some fluctuation, but at the bottom line is gold and silver are going to be some of those commodities that people are going to try to get because it's going to look like uh, it's going to save them wealth-wise. And of course we know that uh, during the tribulation all this stuff is going to be taken away from them anyway, so it's just a false sense of security through these precious metals and these golds and all the rest of the items that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 18. So let's move on now and I'm going to connect the dots for you. and. Now you, you see a very, very important, so let's go right to this article right here. This will show you, all right, about debt, okay? So if Deuteronomy 28 talks about, you know, if you're a blessed, you're not going to be, you're going to be a lender. You're not going to be a borrower, but take a look. How much money does America owe other countries? As I said, we're over $16 trillion in debt. Now, the biggest one, as you see right here, is China. We've been borrowing money 
like you cannot believe. There's over a trillion dollars in borrowing money. You see it right here. Now, every time that you put your cursor, when you go to my website and you get the link, you'll be able to see how much money we've been borrowing from these nations. And this particular one is Japan, $912.4 billion. .4 billion. And the bigger the circle, you'll see the bigger the amount that the United States is borrowing. I mean, we're borrowing money from all over the, all over the world. This is definitely uh, indication that the curse is falling on America. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12, the exact opposite now has happened in America. And people don't want to take notice of these things because they don't believe in the word of the Lord, but these are the things that are happening. This is what's coming on America. So let's move on to the next one now. I want to show you about the derivative market. So let's let's go here and we'll pull up this. And uh, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. There you go. Move this in the way so you can see it here. <clears throat> it says this. Uh, money contractors equals deflation and it's contracting now. Last time I saw this happen was in 2008 when bond yields 10 year from 1.7 to 1.58 in a matter of a week. And look at the debt clock. Credit and derivatives are decreasing at an alarming rate, thus the overall money creation. Quantitative easing lowers U.S. bond yields leading to higher bond prices and lower stock prices. The crash will lead to the U.S. bond downgrade causing bond yields to rise and the stocks to jump and then hyper, hyperinflation. And of course, all you have to do is Google Frank DeMora and hyperinflation. You'll see that I've been warning about this for some time. Some pretty damn serious people in the financial world that they may be planning for a hyperinflationary event followed by, get this, return to gold. I just showed you the scripture about the Lord showing us that he's going to rip this gold out and obviously it's going to be one of those things that are precious to people. And I've been showing you in my book as a chapter about gold and the silver and what's been going on and everything that I've been telling you to watch for is in the process of taking place. Now, if you know the word of the Lord, you know what's going to happen in the future. So it doesn't surprise me at all that they're talking about the return to gold. And I'm going to give you some other information about this as well. But moving on, it says, plus a basket of commodities, back currencies from China. Of course, we've been borrowing all kinds of money, as you just saw, from China. In the Eurozone, of course, the Eurozone is in trouble. And they will continue to be in trouble because the Lord showed us in Daniel chapter 2, verse 41 through 43, that this revived Roman Empire would not cleave together. It would be like iron and clay. They don't mix, so they're not going to hold together. So this is what I'm also watching for. Now, George Soros recently increased his, here you go again, gold holdings again. Now, this man is one of the richest men in the world. And if he sees what's going on in the commodities, then guess what? And he's buying the gold again. What does this tell you? Well, it really shows us that what Jesus is showing us in the Revelation is we're right on the mark of believing what's, what the Lord shows us. So let me go back to my website because there is a video that I want you to, to listen to as soon as I get to it. There you go. And uh, I'm going to play this for you because they, they do mention about the gold here. And uh, I want you to uh, at least get a chance to listen to this. Yours are the shoulders that others depend on. All right. Sorry about to that. we got to go through this. Uh, to never let them down. We have to go through this commercial. And to get the job done. I'll just close that why there's commercials going on, but the importance about this is what I'm trying to bring to you is the light of what's going on in, in our country, in the United States, and how it's really going to affect the rest of the people. So this is the most important part. Now let me just get this, there you go, so you can hear it, and listen to what they say, 
I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I just want you to get the part about the gold. And we have information from two very big funds, Soros Fund Management, the fund formerly run by George Soros, and also SAC Stephen Cohen. The top holdings for the Soros Fund include AIG, GE, the Gold Trust Spider, and the top new buys, interestingly enough, include AIG, Pioneer, Google, LinkedIn. Now, the top sales, this is of interest, Clorox, Lowe's, and Walmart. And also of interest is the fact that they have increased positions, what your market value, in Johnson & Johnson, CF Industries Holdings, the Gold Trust Spider, and Market Vectors Gold Miner. So a lot of interest in gold as of late. Let's talk about... There you go. So I wanted to just stop it there just to give you reference to make you wise, to let you understand if this man who's been making all kinds of money is is one of the wealthiest men in the world and he's bought buying gold, what does that tell you? Does that put a lot of faith in the dollar? I mean, if, if he knew that the dollar was gonna continue to be the best in the world, which it isn't now because it's already losing a lot of its value, then he would have been buying up all kinds of dollars, but he's not. He's buying up the gold, and when you read my book, you'll see that Russia is buying as much gold as they can. China, India, they're all buying gold. Why are they doing this? Well, if you know Bible prophecy, you know exactly why they're doing it. Maybe they don't understand it, but I'll tell you one thing. We understand what's going on because we're wise in the word of the Lord. So moving on here, let me go Let me go back now and I'm going to read a scripture for you. And then again, I'm going to connect the dots for you. As you see here, I put up the thing that says the food crisis. And of course, we see during the tribulation, there's going to be this horse, this rider on the horse with the scales. And what does this tell us? Well, it's going to be a balance. It's going to be out of balance. And look at this, Revelation 6.6. 6. Revelation 6.6 6 says this. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And what this prophecy tells us is in the last days, people are going to have to work all day long for one small meal. Now the price of wheat's going up, the price of barley's going up, the price of everything is going up. And we're on the well, well on our way, on the road, to seeing Revelation chapter 6, verse 6 come into fruition. We've already started. We've in, we're in the birth pangs of all these prophecies, including Revelation 6.6. 6. Now let me show you the proof text that I'm basing this on. And of course, keep in mind that this is only a tip of the iceberg of the information that I'm showing you. If you want all of this information, you can download my book today for free. So let's go and see what Peter Schiff have to say. Here it comes. All right. It says Peter Schiff. Thanks to the Federal Reserve policy like QE3, the quantitative easing, that's what that stands for, we're all screwed. Excuse the language, but I'm just reading exactly what he said. U.S. Federal Reserve policies like the QE3 are building up to an inflationary catastrophe, says the economic expert Peter Schiff. Now, he is one of the, the most well-renowned people in the, uh, in the, when it comes to finances and what's going on with the economy. So when we hear what he has to say, we should really pay attention. Now, Schiff is CEO of the Chief Global Strategic and Euro-Pacific Capital, made his remarks about the dire consequences of excessive quantitative easing in the video interview on Yahoo!, the financial breakout. Now, Schiff said that he had doubled the Fed's third round on bond buying, known as QE3 Operation Screw, because everybody's pretty much screwed if they own dollars. All right, and you'll notice here it says that the euro demise, and they'll give you a free book on what they're saying how to be protected. And look at if you read Daniel chapter two about the revived Roman Empire and he tells you that it's not going to hold together and the European Union are the exact nations that used to be in the old Roman Empire and now the Euro is in massive problems I just showed you yesterday 
that there's about eight or nine nations within the Euro zone that are rioting, boycotting. So we know that things are under effect. So let's go on here. It says we we warn that the Fed can only continue its policy by buying U.S. Treasury and mortgages by printing more money. And printing more money inevitably will drive much higher inflation. The Fed is now promising to print $85 billion a month. So that, that's a lot. It says this. That's over a trillion dollars a year. And I think that's just an opening bid. Now, Peter also went on to say this, who is the best known, uh, he is the best known for predicting the collapse of the housing bubble in the 2008 financial crisis in his book uh, that came out in 2007, The Crash Proof, launched at the claim made by the Fed Chairman Bernanke that the QE3 is inflation neutral. That's a bunch of bull. He's lying. Now, this is what Schiff said. It is not inflation neutral. It is very deflation. It is the very deflation of inflation. The government tries to mask how bad inflation is by giving us phony numbers that purport to measure it with the CPI or the C or the PEC, or I'm sorry, the PCE, or whatever Bernanke wants to point to. But the reality is prices are already going up. Inflation isn't running rampant now, he said, only because all the new Fed money hasn't worked its way through the consumer yet. And you're going to see how Revelation 6.6 comes into play here, too. Now, inflation enters the market in different ways, Schiff's explained. It goes through the banks, it goes through the housing, it goes through the stocks, and sometimes it takes a distorted path before it ultimately ends up in the consumer prices as proof that the major bout of inflation is lurking around the corner he noted that the gold prices and he's even mentioning the gold prices like I've just pointed out before the gold prices have more than doubled since the Federal Reserve launched the QE1 the QE2 and now the QE3 raising gold prices indicate a weakening dollar all of the things which I've been talking about and I'm not an expert in in finances I'd be the first one to admit that but I am in I consider myself well-rounded in the Bible to the point that I know what the Lord says about finances and what he says about the gold and what he says about nations who come against his his nation Israel and you put all these things together and you can talk to people about what to look for in the future because these are uh, the words of the blueprints of the, the Lord himself to show us what's going to happen. So it doesn't take much to understand the dollar will weaken, gold, silver will go up and of course people are going to be trusting in the wrong things as they trust in their gold and their silver it will be taken away as we see from the revelation you should be trusting in Jesus Christ and him only. Now, going on, it says, that's pretty good barometer of what's going on, Schiff said. Now, when the QE3 fueled inflation finally go does strike, Schiff said, the impact will hit Americans hard. Ultimately, I think we're going to see prices skyrocketing. Now, if you would, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, I would ask you to do this. Put prices skyrocketing, Frank DeMora. Google that because you're liable to get close to a hundred articles that I wrote about since I opened up the website about, I think it was in 2007. And I've been warning people to watch what's going on, and every year the prices go up. Now, I've been warning that food prices are going to go up. And when you read, go down into here. You're going to see about the gas prices going up, and you're going to see about everything else going up with it. Food prices going up, right? So what I've been saying all along, all of a sudden, you got the best people in, not only in the United States, but Shift is well-renowned. And so if he's talking about the same things uh, that I've been warning about, and I'm not an expert, but I'm taking 
the advice from my Lord Jesus Christ based on his word, then, you know, who is the smarter person? Now, I don't know if Schiff knows the Lord or not. But I know the Lord, and I know what's going to happen in the future because the Lord has spelled it out in the book. So you really don't need to be one of these experts. All you need to know is the word of the Lord. Because the Lord told us in Isaiah, he said that I'm going to show you the things that are going to take place in the future before they happen. And so we're seeing all of these things. So it's really not hard at all to let people know what to expect. And if you think that the dollar is going to continue to go up, you're, you're wrong. You're mistaken. And you better start preparing yourself for what's coming. Uh, and we know that it's going to be coming a lot faster now, than it's, especially as they start doing this QE3. Now let me go back to another article. Of course, we're going to go back here to see which one that is. We're going to click. We'll click on. Here you go. Now here's another article that it talks about the gold. It says gold. Let me just read it. It says the uh, Diane Alter, the U.S. Federal Reserve, is about to give the huge boost to gold prices, and at the first push, could should or should come. As soon as this week, the parade of dismal economic reports, both here and abroad, have stoked hopes that more stimulus in the form of the third round of quantitative easing is imminent. The clear signal of when we can expect the QE3 could come at the week's or at this week's two-day Federal Open Market Committee, the O, the F. OMC meeting that starts on July 31st. An increasing number of the Federal Reserve officials are convinced that the central bank must explain or expand its stimulus operation immediately amid the recent spat of the gloom data singling economic growth that has hit a roadblock. And of course I've been telling the people more jobs are going to be lost, the dollar is going to go down, the prices of gold and the silver will be going up. I haven't steered you wrong yet. There's no way that I can steer you wrong. I don't believe in. Why do I say that? It's because it's in the scriptures. The Lord shows us certain things and all we have to do is put it together. And if, we're, if we see the pattern of what the Lord indicated and that pattern goes parallel to what the Lord had shown us, then the conclusion would be God is, God is showing us these things and they're happening for a reason. And the reason is we're moving a lot closer to the seven-year tribulation. So let's go down now, if you will. Let me go back and we're going to connect the dots here for you because now I'm going to get into Israel. And every day I usually start off with Israel, but I wanted to start off with the United States because of uh, what's happening in the uh, in the marketplace and how it's going to affect all of America and the world for that matter. And we know that the bottom line is this, when the market dies and there's a domino effect that goes throughout the world, guess what? The new system comes into play and that system will be the system that the Antichrist brings out when he tries to bring the world together and bring back a uh, bring back a, a world that is has been placed in chaos because the financial markets around the world have collapsed so now Israel is going why is Israel so important well we know that the Antichrist when he comes he's gonna make a covenant with Israel and many nations for a period of seven years and that seven year period is the known as the tribulation period but there are a few things that are going to happen before the tribulation begins one of those things is Psalm 83 that war will be fought and of course you're seeing the prelude to this war on the news right now and many of the people who have been watching the news don't even have a clue anything about Psalm 83 and how it relates to God's Word and what to expect in the near future so very very pointedly let me just tell you this look at the names here that I put up in this photo on the left hand side are the Old Testament names the right hand side are the New Testament or if, if you will modern day names not the New Testament but the modern day names of these people you'll see Jordan's in the mix the Lebanese the uh, obviously Gaza which is really going crazy right now the Hamas and the Gaza they're the 
Palestinians and their the old Phoenicia all right so keep in mind you can go back to my site look at these take the time to look at each one of them because they're all in the news and of course if you're new to prophecy just know this scroll down when you get to my site you'll see that all of these nations are going to come together as a confederacy against the nation of Israel to try to wipe them out we'll see that in verse 4 when it talks about cutting them off so that their name isn't even a mentioned anymore we, as we see here so what I wanted to point out to you you saw all of these nations here they are again and I'm gonna reference this so you'll understand that the two wars that haven't been fulfilled yet uh, one is the Psalm 83 and the other is the Ezekiel war Ezekiel chapter 38 and all of these nations will be in the war that comes after the Psalm war and you're gonna see why I'm giving you this information in a few seconds so let's go first of all we see Egypt here you'll know that Egypt is mentioned uh, as the Hagarenes right there and so let's find out what's going on with Egypt all right it says Egypt Jordan Turkey now keep in mind Turkey's in the Ezekiel war Jordan and Egypt are in the Psalm 83 war Russia is in Ezekiel 38 as a matter of fact Russia is the one who leads the war brings down Turkey and Iran with them and all the other nations who are mentioned in the uh, Ezekiel 38 prophecy so it says Egypt Jordan Turkey and Russia cause condemnation of Israel's resort of resort to force US leads Western supporters it goes on to say in in uh, Cairo Muslim Brotherhood warns Israel's crimes won't go unpunished now in London Hague says Hamas bears principal responsibility for the violence now what I want to show you here is this you take a look at all these names mentioned here here you have the United States you have Hague with Great Britain down here I'm gonna bring you to my book in my book I want you to see uh, a portion of my book where it talks about the scripture in Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 13 because in 38 13 this is where the law the Lord talks about the young lions and all they do is give a formal protest when the Russians and Iranians and Turkish and the rest of those people come down on Israel all of these young lions who are actually the break off of Great Britain um, will do nothing to help Israel all right so when we see these these mention because it, it does say that the young lions of Tarshish and all they do is say come what are you doing you're coming down to take a spoil to take a prey so they do nothing nothing at all to help Israel so when we go to the article again let's go back here and we see these same people that are mentioned in that Ezekiel war it shouldn't surprise you at all that Russia is taking a sides with the enemy of God Turkey and obviously the Muslim Brotherhood from Egypt is siding up getting ready to fulfill the Psalm 83 war so all of these things are connected you may not know it but if you knew what the Lord told us about then you would understand completely now it says on the second day of operation pillar of defense Israel was getting strong support for several Western countries led by the United States the young lion with while Egypt Jordan Russia and Turkey condemned the, the resort to force as an appropriate and over overly aggressive of course they wouldn't be they wouldn't have to be overly aggressive if they didn't get some hundred seven hundred rockets thrown into the Israeli territory by the Hamas who by the way are mentioned in the Psalm 83 it is obvious that Israel has a legitimate right to defend itself to protect its own citizens against rocket attacks from the Gaza Strip and they certainly do and of course you'll get down here where it says uh, his British colleague uh, William Hague said that the Hamas bears the principle of the responsibility so what will we see here what's the bottom line to all this well the countries are coming into position there they may not even know it the leaders may not even know it 
But what they're doing is they're posturing themselves, every one of the nations posturing themselves to fulfill either Psalm 83 or Ezekiel chapter 38, without a question. So let's move down here to another article. You'll see it says, for Netanyahu, Gaza escalation could pave the way to Iran strike. Now, this is really important because, as you know now, when you go back to my site and you look at Iran, Iran's in bed with the Russians when this Ezekiel war takes place. All right? And so is Turkey. You'll see Turkey right here. There you go. So all of these things are connected, like I said. But let me go back again. We'll connect to what Netanyahu said. It says, for Netanyahu, Gaza escalation could pave the way for Iran strike. And I've been warning, watch what Netanyahu is going to do, because if Israel does strike Iran, that could really set off the Psalm 83 war. And the way things are going right now, anything could set off this Psalm 83 war. They're getting, they're mobilizing troops, they're getting ready to march in right into the Gaza. They've been doing a lot of airstrikes, and it certainly looks like something major about to explode. Now, either it's going to be a major birth pang, or it's going to end up being a Psalm 83 war. We'll know shortly, I believe. Now, until this week, Prime Minister Netanyahu took pride in never having to lead Israel into war. And of course, remember what the Lord said in uh, Matthew 24, verses 6 through 7. There'll be, you're going to hear about wars and rumors of wars. And obviously, we've been hearing about rumors of wars, and now we're about to step in to a major war. How we may be on the, the verge of starting not one, but two. And this is what I've been warning about. Now, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the Defense Minister, Ehud Barak, have not given up the dream of carrying out a major operation in Iran. And for some time prior to the recent American election, they were in disagreement. Now, Barack was again creating facts on the ground, which President Barack Obama would be forced to deal with, whereas Netanyahu entertained the idea of exploiting a sensitive political period preceding what he thought would be the surefire victory of his esteemed ally, Mitt Romney. And why did he go to Mitt Romney? Because Mitt Romney was going to uh, align himself fully, like all the rest of the presidents did, uh, with Israel. And under Barack Obama, that hasn't been the case. And this is why uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was looking to have Romney put into place. And again, this is part of the curse. We have a president that is coming against Israel. Now, he's been saying he's going to protect Israel. And, uh, of course, we haven't seen that happen in the last four years. Will things change? We're about to see. As the election there recedes into history while others approach, this twosome is going back to dealing with the Iran plan, which is one that will necessarily influence the character of the next Knesset in government for Netanyahu. Operation Pillar of Defense is not a baptism of fire. Sixteen years have passed since the opening of the Western Wall Tunnel in September of 1996, an act that escalated events on the ground called Hot Iron. At the time, by the Defense Forces, <laughs> Netanyahu at the time, a novice, arrogant Prime Minister, took the public beating so painful that he was forced to revoke his refusal to make concessions to the PLO uh, leader Yasser Arafat, I mean this up, concerning Hebron. And since then, throughout seven years of power during the, the two terms in office, Netanyahu has kept his finger off the trigger and has even been proud of, the, of his restraint. Now things are going to be changing. You're going to see that. It says, this week, however, the premier crossed a, a private red line by drawing or daring to authorize the undertaking a large military operation. It isn't a war, in his view, rather a military move whose goals, duration, and achievements are circ circumscribed. 
but the dark cloud in the Gaza skies might serve as an, an alternative to pre or preface to guess what an Iran operation and all it all depends on the circumstances that would happen further down that what might be along the road so we need to be watching what's going to happen as more of these missiles are shot off at Israel more of the mortars are shot off at Israel is Israel going to launch a two-pronged offensive uh, that remains to be seen but I do know this from the word of the Lord Psalm 83 is going to happen and so is Ezekiel chapter 38 so whether this event or whether these events over the last week or in coming days or coming weeks uh, actually leads us into it we do know that if this isn't the cause something else is coming but we do know this that the birth pangs that the Lord talked about in Mark 13 8 they're getting worse so it certainly looks at this point that we may be going into the Psalm 83 war but as I said we're all gonna find out shortly now concerning those rockets rockets land in field outside Jerusalem as war looms over Gaza this is today's news so more of the rockets are going through take a look if it'll allow me to play it All right. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there with it, but uh, you can you can go to my site, click the link. You'll be able to watch that without the commercial. But two rockets landed in open field outside of Jerusalem after the air raid sirens sounded in the city, sending Israelis running to cover. They've been running to cover for weeks now. I told many many people who've been coming to my site. I've been getting phone calls left and left and right now. And uh, I'm even getting phone calls now for people asking me to come to speak at their church or speak at a forum that they're presenting because they're finally seeing that the things that I've been pointing to are coming to pass. And so all I can do is to show the people where the Lord said these things and show the people what to expect. And then when you see over and over and over again the things that I've been warning about are coming to pass, you ought to know one thing. It's not because of Frank DeMora. It's just that Frank DeMora has read the Bible and he understands and he knows where to point to and he can help you understand what's going on until you take the time to study the Word, study the Bible for yourself. Then you too will understand what you should be looking for. And we do know this, in the last days, Jerusalem is going to become the burdensome stone. And one of the reasons why we're seeing the Gaza and the Hummus, which are mentioned in the Psalm 83, attack Israel and attack Jerusalem, is because they are working to try to get back Jerusalem and to drive out all of the Jews. And this is exactly what Psalm 83 is all about. So let's move on here. Now here we go, Egypt in Gaza truth bid as rocket jolts Tel Aviv. And we're noticing it says Egypt trying to open a tiny window of emergency peace uh, diplomacy in Gaza on Friday, but hopes for even a brief ceasefire while its prime minister was uh, inside the, the uh, bombardment enclave to talk to leaders of the the Islamic Hamas movement were immediately dashed. Now why am I putting this up? Well I always go back to the Word of the Lord and what does the Word of the Lord show us? Let's take a look. Thessalonians 5 3 I mentioned this to you yesterday in my post for when they shall say peace and safety of course they're trying to make the truce I keep telling you that the truce uh, if they do install a truce it's only gonna last for a very short time then what will happen is the uh, Palestinians and the Islamic Jihad and the Fatah, the Hezbollah, the Hamas, they're going to regroup and start sending in more of the rockets and the missiles to try to entice Israel to come down, and that's exactly what they're doing. We're seeing the call for peace and safety right now. 
Now the second part, the sudden destruction part that Paul warned about, we're about ready to see that. We've already been in the, the, the birth pangs, as the Lord warned us in this section of the prophecy. Those birth pangs, as I just got through showing to you, are getting a lot worse. So let's move down to the last article here. And you'll see thousands rallying in Egypt against Israel's offensive. Now why am I showing you this? Because Egypt is in that prophecy. Egypt is taking a major role now. And they are going to be one of the major people who will be using their complete military to try to wipe out Israel. And there's no question that Marcy, the current president now, who took over Mubarak, is already, his government has already slated Israel as their number one enemy. So there is no peace that will be formed here. And we know that the marching of thousands of people in Egypt as they protest against, what, what, against what's happening now uh, is only a sign of the birth pangs. And when Israel doesn't stop, what's going to happen? Well, obviously, if you know the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord tells us everyone will be coming against Israel in the last days. That means public opinion because Israel's going to look like the bad guy. The, the media makes the world think that Israel's the bad guy. But Israel is only responding to the 700 rockets that have already been poured in. And there is no indication that the Hamas is going to stop. And if they do stop, if something happens, just put up the red flag. Said Frank DeMora, put up the red flag. He told you this that watch how long the ceasefire lasts because it will break down again and they will start sending more rockets in. You can, you can take that to the bank because that's what's been happening and that's what's going to continue to happen. So as I scroll back up to the top of my website, I just want to say this. I can only present this information that the Lord has given to us in his Bible. It's up to the Holy Spirit to take the scales off of your eyes and to to teach you the things that you need to know but the most important part of all this is the Lord told you this you must be born again John 3 3 you have to be born again if you're not born again your your time here is very crucial because what do I mean by that uh, because if the rapture of the church were to happen today and you're not born again, you would be left behind. And you would face the Antichrist and everything that goes along with the Antichrist, including God's wrath on an unbelieving world. So yes, we see America's dollar is in flame. We see the, the world situation is flaming up. But there's hope. And that hope is, the Lord said, keep on the watch. When you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. And God is near and he's got, I believe, that he has his hand on the doorknob ready to turn it in and to open that door up to take the church up. Only God knows exactly when it's going to happen, but unless you're ready, when he opens that door up, if you're not ready, you will be left behind. If you're born again in Christ Jesus, He's going to take you home and then you will have the peace like you've never seen and that day is going to be a blessing and the, even the Lord told us the blessing our blessed hope is for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and believe me no I take that back don't believe me just believe what the Lord has to say all I'm doing is pointing to the scriptures of what the Lord said to look for and I'm hoping that you'll read the scriptures and understand we're running out of time. God bless you all.